Okay. Paul, you've spoken tonight at the Cycle for Sick Children um, event in Limerick, uh, talking a lot about your career, about the issues of doping, obviously, in cycling, um, but also about your journalism, etc. How do you feel it went? Yeah, well, I was very happy. It was, uh, it was lovely to be able to engage with some Irish bike fans about some difficult subjects, a difficult subject. Uh, for the first time in really 22 years since Rough Riders published, it's the first time anyone's actually asked me to come down and, and talk about it and talk about my career. And it was, uh, yeah, it was nice. I enjoyed it. Some of the questions were great. Um, so, yeah, it was a very, very uh, interesting experience. Yeah. You're back from New York. You were there with the NY Velocity guys. Um, you probably got a lot of feedback as well on, on how things have been the last few months. Yeah, I hadn't ever met Andy Shen before or Dan Smaltz. Um, uh, or Leslie uh, Cohen about who created the defence fund for me. So it was lovely to go and meet those and something to engage with some, again, some real bike fans. You know, you hear a lot of former pros talking about how much they love cycling. Uh, you go to New York and you see these guys in a in a pub killing themselves on roller racing in a roller racing event and. The love of cycling is absolutely totally pure. They don't have to explain it. Um, so it was lovely to see that, and it was again very nice and a pleasure to meet to meet Andy and Leslie. Yeah. You've said before, like that, to some extent. You know, I think when Rough Ride came out, it was probably for some people an unpopular message. You know, that they didn't want to know about the the gritty, dirty side of the sport. Um, and I think you, it's probably fair to say you're ostracised to some extent, um, but things have turned right around in the last few months. You've got a lot of support um, from, you know, through the Defence Fund and, and for your journalism. Does it make you feel very differently about, about your career, you know, that you're at this point now where there seems to be much more of an appreciation for what you've done? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's... Um, you know, a couple of months ago, when just after I got the subpoena from the UCI, uh, I felt quite lonely at that stage and felt, you know, asked myself the question, well, ultimately, you know, did it achieve anything? All your campaigning and all your, you know, trying to do the right thing for the sport, what, what did you actually achieve? Um, and I thought, well, it didn't achieve very much, really. But then the Defence Fund started uh, and grew by by day and I realised you know it was uh, well, maybe I did actually achieve something you know maybe it was worthwhile maybe the message I was bringing was one that ultimately people thought was important um, and that's been really really satisfying absolutely terrific yeah for a long time it, there was a presumption that Armstrong was too big to fall that he was such a big name um, and it certainly looked to be the case when the the federal investigation was ended earlier this year so are you surprised by how things have turned around in the last few months and where he is now yeah, I think uh, as as uh, as unimaginable as it was that he would be stripped of his seven titles, I thought for me personally the the, the greater impact was when um, Nike dropped him. I mean, I never thought that Nike would, would leave him or drop him like that. And when that happened, I thought, wow, that was uh, that's something I didn't actually ever envisage. Um, so you know, it's been. Uh, a very, very interesting time in the sport. But as I've said before, it doesn't end with Lance. It's not about Lance. It's never been about Lance. It's never been, for me, it's never been at Lance. It's never been about Bjorn Rees or anyone like that who's cheated to win. It's been about, you know, the, the factors that uh, have provoked them to do what they did. And that hasn't been addressed. And hopefully in London we can address that tomorrow and uh, expose or try and change uh, the role the governing body has played in all of that. You mentioned yeah, obviously London, so it's part of the Change Cycling Now initiative, this new group that set up a pressure group with obviously journalists part of it, but there's also different representations such as the anti-doping scientists, um, team managers, etc. And presumably over time there'll be more people will join that. Uh, what do you think a group like that can achieve? Well. We're going to sit down. I'm very good on the problem. I've never been great on the solution. So we're going to sit down with the people who have a genuine desire to address the problem. We're going to discuss it. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to come up with a solution, but we're going to try, at least try, to um, come up 
with a charter uh, that's going to, you know, at least give us some idea of the way forward. I've got some ideas about what I think simple things that could be done uh, to change our sport for, be for the better, for good. Uh, and I'm sure there are more intelligent minds um, in the change cycling now movement who are going to have an even more valuable contribution to make. It'll be great to sit around with those people and to discuss those issues and to try and actually uh, make a plan uh, for the sport um, but also then keep the pressure on the UCI to do what they absolutely have to do and that is to strip, to remove Heinve Bruggen and Pat McQuaid from the helm because all the talk we're going to do in the next two days um, will achieve nothing if first base is not the removal of McQuaid and Verbruggen from the UCI. People have also suge suggested that the anti-doping element should be taken away from the UCI. Is that something you also see as important to do? Well, that, that's essential, yeah. You know, if, if uh, removing uh, McQuaid and Verbruggen is first base, second base is, removing, is the uh, uh, handing over the doping testing in the sport to an independent body, absolutely. That, that should be completely, you know, the, to ask a governing body to be uh, promoters and policemen of the sport is, uh, is a no-no. Separate to that, you have your own um, criminal, uh, sorry, legal complaint. You're looking for a criminal investigation into Pat McQuaid and Heinver Bruggen. Uh, what's the latest on that? Well, the latest on the criminal complaint is it's in the hands of the Swiss prosecutor. Uh, he will either direct the uh, Swiss police to investigate it or he'll decide, look, I've looked at this, I don't think there's anything uh, we need to address here and he's going to drop it. Now, I've been told by my lawyer that uh, you know, he feels confident that they, he will actually um, direct the Swiss police to investigate it, but I won't know that for possibly another week, possibly a bit longer. Is that the end of it then? I mean, if it does, for whatever reason, get dropped uh, or... Do you think there's any chance you'll pursue a civil action? Well, that's up to... I'm going to obviously discuss that with, with Cedric and what he thinks uh, we need to do. You know, when we reach that, uh, that point, we'll make a decision on that. Um, you know, I've always been really reluctant to... Uh, about suing anybody, especially in our job as journalists. Um, it makes life much more difficult. That whole litigation climate makes you much more difficult. I always swore I'd never... Uh, sue anybody but I'm more than prepared to make an exception for McQuaid and Verbruggen because the damage they've done to the sport in Verbruggen's case since he became president in McQuaid's case since 2006 when he uh, took over that role I think they've done uh, the sport a serious amount of damage and they need to be held to account for that. The UCI might counter and say that there's an independent commission being set up um you know, the, the, the three members of that were named. Do you have a, a view on those, or is it too soon to know uh, how they will how they will handle things? Um, I don't know very much about any of them other than the fact that Tanny Gray Thompson is a successful former Paralympian. Um, you know, uh, so look, I've, I've got to wait and see um, and wait for that report. You know, I can't prejudge you know, their ability, how independent they're going to be, uh, how hard they're going to look at this. I don't know. I'm hopeful that they will, but, but I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that are, are scratching their heads at this moment and wondering, uh, you know, how, how independent is this? They seem to be pretty independent of the UCI. You know, you w I would have liked to have seen a forensic accountant in there who's going to actually be able to probe the finances which is what something we were promised um, but look let them get on with it and we'll see you know ultimately it'll be when they produce the report that we'll be able to gauge how independent they've been that, that'll actually be very simple that'll be very simple when they produce their report we'll know very very quickly how independent uh, they've been by that i mean i guess you feel that perhaps under the terms of reference that have been laid out that there will from your point of view, you may feel that there's supporting evidence for, for some of those, for example... Well, I, know that, I know that the evidence um, is pretty compelling uh, that McQuaid and Verbruggen have been complicit in this. For me, the evidence is compelling. Now, if they can't find that, you know, I don't know, they're obviously not looking. Um, 
so again, I'm not going to prejudge, you know, uh, their competence or you know how they're going to go about. It. I'm just hopeful that they'll do the right thing and do it well.